fast asleep. These little babies waiting for the day. Come and say hello. <laughs> I wonder how long we could stand here. Leave me in peace. A lot of welcome up. <laughs> I nearly got took out by a deer this morning. Uh, I was travelling along a road and the farmer's fields left and right of me and the road's quite sunken with bushes, hedgerow, either edge of the, either side of, and, and brush hedges either side of the road. And I'm cruising along about 50 mile an hour and just by chance I saw something at the right hand side of my eye. I couldn't quite make out what it was through the gaps in the, in the hedgerow. So I slowed down and I saw something a second time so I knew there was something there. So I slowed down again. I got down to about 20 miles an hour. I'm literally just coasting along. All of a sudden, this huge deer jumped over, vaulted the hedgerow, straight into the middle of the road. I bet it wasn't more than 20 foot in front of me. It lost its footing, it's skipping around all over the place, spun around, vaulted back. If I'd have carried on going at the same speed, there's every chance that flaming thing would have landed right on my bonnet. So I feel quite lucky this morning. I'm actually on the very northern side of the Sherwood Forest National Nature Reserve this morning and I'm headed into the heart more sort of southerly and I've got three three bits of news I want to share before I get some shooting done. Uh, one bit of junk and two bits of positive news, two bits of good news. So I'm going to march first, I need to get a wiggle on so I'm going to make my way down here I think and then skim off that way over and towards the forest over there somewhere over there yeah let's do that and when i find a comfortable spot and i catch my breath <laughs> i'll bring you back talk a bit of junk uh have a chat about good stuff and then we'll get some shots took i'll see you shortly down in the nature reserve um, on a strip of the edge of a strip of pine forest that connects the northern side heath to the actual forest on the south and I'm in these margins but I'm going to head into the into the forest to try and pick up on some um, some of the ancients but really it's the weather that's steering me this morning uh, forecast is for bright sun from about I think from about 10 30 um, and time now is 7.06 a.m. So I've got a few hours uh, before the light's going to wash us out. I had the faint hope that some of that fog was going to be kicking around and then if it had been hanging around for, for long enough as the sun came up, we could have had some spectacular light. I don't think it's going to work out that way. I think the fog didn't make it in here, particularly this morning, so... No problem, we've just got to be ready for changes in light as they happen and um, that's just my plan. I want to get into the right spot as soon as I can and then be prepared. I've got a few things I need to, I need to just speak about. Um, updates really. I'm doing everything in my power not to vent. GoPro. If you... Uh, 
If you're thinking about buying a GoPro Hero 9, don't do it. Just don't do it. it don't do it. <laughs> Just don't do it. I really don't want to vent. In any normal walk of modern life, if we buy something that's broken and a manufacturer says, it's broken and we've got no fix for it, we don't know what to do, it's been broken for six months almost and we're looking at trying to fix it but we can't. You get your money back, you send the faulty goods back to the manufacturer, they either fix it or they refund you, but not GoPro. Don't vent, don't vent, don't. There's a fault with the GoPro Hero 9, an audio fault. And quite well spoken about, quite well known now, but nothing seems to be done about it. And the reason I'm mentioning it here now on this channel is I've suffered GoPro service or lack of service. And what infuriates me beyond my own experience is the fact that that company is still selling faulty product to consumers and not letting them know that there is an audio issue with it that they can't fix. And that's wrong in my eyes. That's really wrong. So if all this does is stops one person from, from wasting money on a Hero 9, then it's been worthwhile mentioning it. That's all I can say. I, I don't want to waffle about it. I don't want to, I don't want to change my vibe because it's been beautiful walking in here this morning. Even the deer that nearly killed me was exciting. So that's the mood I'm in. <laughs> I've sent all my information off to trading standards and I've done that once, once previously in my life have I felt that passionate about poor service. So I hope that organization gets brought to account sooner or later because they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. They're taking people's hard earned money and, and they're just ignoring their responsibilities as a manufacturer. I'm venting, so let's stop. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to two bits of good news. Don't buy a GoPro, period. Skip it. Move on. First bit of good news. Um, this week, yes, this week, I became a, an ambassador. Not a Ferrero Rocher eating consulate type ambassador. The ambassador's receptions are noted in society for their host's exquisite taste. That captivates his guests. I became an ambassador for a company in the UK called Vanguard, Vanguard Photo UK. And it's based on the polar opposite in service terms to GoPro. If GoPro needs a role model for how to provide customer service, have a word with Vanguard UK because they can teach you a lot. I'm not venting, I'm not venting. I'm not ven so yeah, I've become a, uh, an ambassador for Vanguard. I want to mention it because it'll affect some of the content that I bring. Um, I'll explain that in a second. But also, I need to be clear that it's not paid. I'm not a paid sponsor in any way. I don't receive any money for this. It, it's purely my own action, my choice. Now I want to say, my bread and butter, my, my primary concern for the channel is my vlogs getting out, shooting as I am today. That's not changing, it never will. That's, that's what I'm about, that's what I wanna share. If I do any reviews, if I do anything product oriented, it'll be an addition, it'll be a supplement, an add-on, an extra. It won't be the core content. So I'm not shifting anyway, I'm not doing anything fresh. I just wanna let you know, I just wanna be clear about it, that's all. That's the first bit of news. <laughs> I feel like I'm out of practice. <laughs> I'm sorry about this last couple of weeks, only posting short videos. I haven't had a camera and I, and I haven't got one now. This is cr oh, wake screen up. Nice. Um, so that's the first one. Don't buy a GoPro Hero 9. It's broken. GoPro know about it and they don't care. Second thing, positive news, really positive news, excited about even. I am now officially a Vanguard ambassador quite proud to be so because that company is great. Thank you Vanguard. Third bit of good news. This week I took delivery of my first book. It's, been, it's not funny. I took delivery of my first book. It's not a book, it's a zine. And 
it's the Sherwood One Zine that if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll have heard me mention. That's way too loud, isn't it? That's just, that's just silly. Stop it. So, a whisper. I took delivery of my first zine, Sherwood One. I'm quite pleased with it, which for me is a big deal. Now, I'm not going to get into too much now, I've spoke enough. It's for sale, you can find it on my website, I'll stick a link below. Um, it's not been printed in photographic book quality, it's not on 300 gram cotton rich archival quality bright white, you know, it's printed on 190 gram recycled silk media, standard stuff. And it's been printed in a zine quality, which is different to regular printed quality. It's got that magazine print feel to it. That's what I was going for. That's what I wanted this to be. The cover's great. I love that. It's a 300 gram card. Um, again, a silk card that's been matte laminated. So the actual publication's got quite a nice tactile feel to it. So aesthetically, I'm quite pleased. I, I, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Um, what else to say? I've tried to make it as cheap as I can. And by cheap, I mean, I'm not going to make any money out of this. It's not, it's not about making money out of this. It's about getting my work into a format that's not digital. That's what I wanted to do it for. I wanted to be able to spread the word a little bit better than purely digitally. And again, in previous videos, I'll give mention to this, but it's something that over time I'll speak more about. I'll, I'll be moving into my next scene very shortly. I'm already compiling images on that one. So yeah, it's quite a, quite an interesting thing for anybody who's not familiar with zines. I think effectively in our, our time anyway, zines started around the 1930s and it was uh, an offshoot from fanzines that's where the zine title comes from and it was related to i think it was something like i did look at this i think it was like superheroes people writing their own superhero comics and stories and stuff printing these little publications self-printing which would have been tough back in the 30s i imagine and um, just distributing it amongst themselves and then I think into the 40s, 50s and 60s, mm. there the became a bit of a cult following for it. And obviously it started to be used for different messages. Then collectors stepped in and people started to look at it as a collectible thing. So I, I knew this before I started the project. And that's one of the reasons that motivated me to go down the zine print route rather than going straight in for a, a, a fully bound book. And what I've done to add as much value to the zine environment as I possibly can is made these limited editions. So there's 250 copies of this first one. That's all there'll be. There won't be any more limited edition copies. After 250, it's done. And that's it. And each one's numbered, comes with a certificate of authenticity. And yeah, it, if you're just into collecting zines, check out the website. You can pick up a collectible limited edition there. And if you're into the photography, if you're into the land, landscape woodland, there's a zine available. It will support me, no, no question, but I'm not going to be buying any flowers off the back of this, that's for sure. So uh, retail price UK is 15 quid, and that includes postage. It's 44 pages long with, I think, 35 images across different spreads. So it's the best value I can squeeze out of a reasonably it's at the high end of quality of zine printing, that much I can say. It's not stapled, it's actually perfect bound, so it's got a spine. And yeah, it's just it's just a it's just a nice thing. <sighs> Enough waffle, eh? Let's get some photos took. I'm headed off behind you over into the deepest, darkest woods. And um, as I do, and I find any compositions. What I'm going to try and do this time is a little bit different to the last time I did a vlog. I'm not going POV, so the camera's going to stay, this view is going to stay in my hand. And I'm just going to try and, rather than talk through the shots, talk through the environment and where I find compositions. So do something a little bit different to normal today 
and see how we get on. Let me know down below in the comments if it's preferable over talking through compositions on the back of the camera and um, it might influence the way forward. We'll see. Right, that's enough. Onwards, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, first, first little composition. It's a tree, surprise, surprise. surprise, surprise. And the reason that I'm, I'm picking on it is because it's because of the light, forgive the plaster. So as the light's coming down from the left hand side, it's catching the face of the tree there, as you can see. So we've got some, obviously there's a, a difference in color, but it, it re-emphasizes it. It's like on the, on the background there, we have the shadow, we have the lights here, but it's a nice little woody mix around it as well. There's some spindly little silver birch there and this huge oak trunk in contrast. So, so as a composition, sat somewhere in the centre of frame, portrait, I've took a shot there. I shot at f1.8, wide open, <laughs> shallow, shallow depth of field to try and soften some of that background. 1 3 20th, f1.8 ISO 100, and I'll pop that image up now. It's quite, quite nice, isn't it? Quite an interesting tree, but particularly particularly how the light bounces off the left hand side of the trunk with the shadow on the right and then this nice mix of spindly little contrasting foliage in the background which I'll try to find another one I did have a look at shooting that but it's just not it's just not grabbing me Ooh, it was quite interesting now Look at them gnarly branches. Do you know what? I think I'll mooch around here for a minute now and just try and find a composition on him. His canopy is very, very young. There's very little up there. As you can see, there's, there's not much there yet. It's still struggling to come into full bloom. We need some rain, to be honest. I think that's what this place needs. But not this week, we're up to 20 odd degrees, so I'll probably go over here and try and get an angle that way with those, with the gnarly branches there in the, the front of frame and see, because that side over there we've got some, some denser brush. It's quite good here, we've got some brush here, but over there in that direction it might be even better. So that's what I'll do now. A good example because it shows you just how you can go from one thing to something completely different in just a matter of feet. I'll try and form a composition and I'll bring you back if I do. If not, I'll mooch on and I'll bring you back with another. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute. I, uh, I've tried to get a shot on this guy. Yeah, I've taken some shots. I've, I've been shooting in and around him for a little while, but there are many difficulties. Um, let me explain one of them. Back over here from the trail, as I, I'm in a position to kind of get the whole of the, the bottom of the the branch there and a proportion of the trunk with a decent amount of that background in the frame so it's quite full there's not a lot of sky involved something like that the difficulty is I can't get the end of the branch in frame and if I go further back this fella comes into play so I've been going over to the right that widens it widens the frame so it makes it even worse. I've gone over to the left, but going around the tree there makes me closer. So I have less ability to, to get into frame. And all I'm doing is shooting this 50 mil lens. So it's a bit of a no go. I just can't squirrel it out and make it work, unfortunately. 
there's some beautiful light off the face of the trunk there but the further up we go the more sky we get so that light gets dissolved into it it, it just it's, it's more and more difficult to extract that contrast so onwards and upwards let's move to another one can't walk away I've, it's such a lovely area it's such a lovely mixed area the more I've been here the more I've studied it we've got the darker greens the very light greens we've got some mid greens we've got this beautiful old oak squirrely trunk with these gnarly branches coming off it shame about the sun at uh, the sky but once that canopy fills up I'm moving and flies are coming I'm sure it'll give it up I know this trail very well so I can come back but I've never spent any time with this tree in fact I don't think I've ever noticed this tree and I must have walked this path a thousand times 200 times so I've took a few shots I'll pop one or two up if they're any good just to show you what was in my mind as I was mooching around trying to find different things here I think it's a good example even if the images are poor it will show you what was in my mind what I was trying to extract so I'll go with that and that sounds quite motivating actually so yeah I'll plug on grab another one let's try and find another one and uh, something a little bit different so I'll see you in a minute <laughs> bye for now It's been really challenging. Uh, I've walked a long way around the park now. We were over that direction and I've walked all the way along there and come up this way. And uh, the light in, in patches is beautiful. Right, over here, for instance, you can see some highlights there and some highlights there and where you, you can extract scenes <sighs> yeah it's beautiful it's really beautiful the problem is um, finding subjects that are well illuminated because <laughs> in amongst all this magic is there's so many beautiful subjects but not so many of them beautifully illuminated so <sighs> yeah it's been challenging I've took some shots, hopefully one or two nice ones in there. I'm not sure if I make much of a gallery up. If it's only two or three shots, then I'll pop them up at the end of the video. But for now, I'm going to try and extract something from this guy. Look at this fella. How magic is he? Absolutely beautiful. All these little fiddleheads, ferns popping up making the most of this fertiliser that's been dropped by the bark. A oh, mega tree. A huge girth as well. I mean, it's easily, I don't know, eight to ten foot round. This grubby thing <laughs> bowed over the top of us. Just magic, really magic. And then in this part of the forest, we've got a mixture of really beautiful tall trees, some relatively youngsters, but mixed in amongst all this lot, we've got some ancients. And it's so rich in character. It's just, yeah, really, really cool. And it goes on for quite a way here. Major Oak is over in that direction. Oh, look at that patch of light there. 
it's just beautiful. I think we've just seen the start of that morning sun breaking through. It's just about to give now. Yeah, as soon as that sun comes out, it's going to be marking the end of play for today. It'll get very, very bright, very quick. So I'm just going to try and take a shot on this guy. What I like about it, as usual, is that with the, where the light is coming off the face of the tree here, that beautiful curve, that swoop on the base, and then these two outreached arms either side. So I'll start off around here somewhere. And what I'll do is I'll use that tree that's in the background to reduce how much sky we've got and then make the most of that highlighting post-processing and try and dampen down the forest floor a little. Just extract the natural highlights where they live. And then I'm just going to take a very steady mosey on back through this place, back down to the car. That sun's coming up now, I can just sense it. It's, it's getting very bright over there. That patch behind me. <laughs> How cool. Right then folks, I'll grab a shot on this fella. I'll grab a few shots on this fella. I'll try and make something of it. I'll pop that image up now. And then anything else from today, I'll rattle up a gallery at the end. And I hope you find a shot or two in there that you like. But for this week, with video for change, um, audio, I hope, we'll use an external recorder from now on, because let's not go there. So for this week, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Please take care of one another. And as ever, if you can't be good, just be careful. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. That's way too loud, isn't it? That's just that's just silly.